Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Morning Prayer on behalf of the Episcopal Church of the Atonement in the Edgewater neighborhood of Chicago, Illinois. It's Tuesday in the 19th week after Pentecost and the commemoration of Vida Dutton Scudder. I'm Brother Ron Fox. The hagiography on Vida Dutton Scudder is pretty, um, I do have a, a little, a, I guess it would be an abridged version, so I'm going to tell you about her now. Vida Dutton Scudder was born to Congregationalist missionaries in India. In the 1870s, Vida and her mother were confirmed as Episcopalians by Phillips Brooks. After studying English literature at Smith College in Oxford, Scudder began teaching at Wellesley College. Her love of scholarship was matched by her social conscience and deep spirituality. As a young woman, Scudder began the College Settlement Association, joined the Society of Christian Socialists, and began her lifelong association with the Society of the Companions of the Holy Cross in 1889. In 1893, Scudder took a leave of absence from Wellesley to work with Helena Stewart Dudley to found Denison House in Boston. Scudder experienced a breakdown in 1901 due to the stress of teaching and activism. After two years of recuperation in Italy, she returned renewed and became more active in church and socialist groups. She started a group for Italian immigrants at Denison House and took an active part in organizing the Women's Trade Union League. In 1911, Scudder founded the Episcopal Church Socialist League and formally joined the Socialist Party. Her support of striking textile workers in the Lawrence, Massachusetts strike in 1912 drew a great deal of criticism and threatened her teaching position. Though she initially supported World War I, she joined the Fellowship of Reconciliation in 1923, and by the 1930s, she was a pacifist. Throughout her life, Scudder's primary relationships and support network were women. Her closest companion was Florence Converse, who shared in her religious faith and political ideals. After retirement, Scudder authored 16 books on religious and political subjects, combining her intense activism and an equally vibrant spirituality. She was the first woman published in the Anglican Theological Review. The Lord is glorified in his holy ones. Come, let us adore him. For those of you who use the Book of Common Prayer, morning prayer begins as usual on page 80, followed by the Venite on page 82. The Psalms today are 50, 51, and 52, beginning on page 654, and the Canticles are 13 and 18 on pages 90 and 93. For the vast majority of us, the easiest and most accessible way to pray the office is to use the app provided for by my community, the Brotherhood of St. Gregory, which can be found at dailyoffice.app. At dailyoffice.app, you'll see three small bars in the upper right-hand corner, and when you click on those bars, it'll take you to the options page. Just a matter of scrolling through, you need to ensure you're set for the 30-day Psalter, the traditional Lord's Prayer, and the general thanksgiving. It's our tradition and custom here at Church of the Atonement to light a candle, regardless of where we may be, signifying the presence of God in our midst. Mine is already lit. If that's part of your practice, I invite you to do that. We'll take just a moment here, drawing our attention to our Lord, as we begin morning prayer on this Tuesday in the 19th week after Pentecost and the commemoration of Vida Dutton Scudder. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, 
Let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord, our maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. Come, let us adore him. Psalms 50, 51, and 52, beginning on page 654. The Lord, the God of gods, has spoken. He has called the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, perfect in its beauty, God reveals himself in glory. Our God will come and will not keep silence. Before him there is a consuming flame, and round about him a raging storm. He calls the heavens and the earth from above to witness the judgment of his people. Gather before me, my loyal followers, those who have made a covenant with me and sealed it with sacrifice. Let the heavens declare the rightness of his cause, for God himself is judge. Hear, O my people, and I will speak. O Israel, I will bear witness against you. For I am God, your God. I do not accuse you because of your sacrifices. Your offerings are always before me. I will take no bull calf from your stalls, nor he goats out of your pens. For all the beasts of the forest are mine. The herds and their thousands upon the hills. I know every bird in the sky. And the creatures of the fields are in my sight. If I were hungry, I would not tell you. For the whole world is mine and all that is in it. Do you think I eat the flesh of bulls? or drink the blood of goats, offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving, and make good your vows to the Most High. Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you, and you shall honor me. But to the wicked, God says, Why do you recite my statutes and take my covenant upon your lips? since you refuse discipline and toss my words behind your back. When you see a thief, you make him your friend and you cast in your lot with adulterers. You have loosed your lips for evil and harnessed your tongue to a lie. You are always speaking evil of your brother and slandering your own mother's son. These things you have done, and I kept still. And you thought that I am like you. I have made my accusation. I have put my case in order before your eyes. Consider this well, you who forget God. Lest I rend you, and there be none to deliver you. Whoever offers me the sacrifice of thanksgiving honors me. But to those who keep in my way will I show the salvation of God. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness. And cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions. And my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. And so you are justified when you speak and upright in your judgment. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth, a sinner from my mother's womb. For behold, you look for truth, for truth deep within me and will make me understand wisdom secretly. Purge me from my sin, and I shall be pure. Wash me, and I shall be clean indeed. Make me hear of joy and gladness. 
that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. I shall teach your ways to the wicked and sinners shall return to you. Deliver me from death, O God, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness, O God of my salvation. Open my lips, O Lord, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Had you desired it, I would have offered sacrifice. But you take no delight in burnt offerings. The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit. A broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Be favorable and gracious to Zion. And rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will be pleased with the appointed sacrifices, with burnt offerings and oblations. Then shall they offer young bullocks upon your altar. You tyrant, why do you boast of wickedness? Against the godly all day long. You, pro you plot ruin, your tongue is like a sharpened razor. O worker of deception. You love evil more than good, and lying more than speaking the truth. You love all words that hurt. Oh, you deceitful tongue. Oh, that God would demolish you utterly. Topple you and snatch you from your dwelling and root out you out of the land of the living. The righteous shall see and tremble. And they shall laugh at him, saying, This is the one who did not take God for a refuge, but trusted in great wealth and relied upon wickedness. But I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. I will give you thanks for what you have done. And declare the goodness of your name in the presence of the godly. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the second book of the Kings. Josiah was eight years old when he began to reign. He reigned 31 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jedida, son, daughter of Adiah of Bozkoth. He did what was right in the sight of the Lord and walked in all the way of his father David. He did not turn aside to the right or to the left. In the 18th year of King Josiah, the king sent Shephan, son of Azaliah, son of Meshulam, the secretary to the house of the Lord, saying, Go up to the high priest Hilkiah, and have him count the entire sum of the money that has been brought into the house of the Lord, which the keepers of the threshold have collected from the people. Let it be given into the hand of the workers who have the oversight of the house of the Lord. Let them give it to the workers who are at the house of the Lord, repairing the house, that is, to the carpenters, to the builders, to the masons, and let them use it to buy timber and quarried stone to repair the house. But no accounting shall be asked from them for the money that is delivered into their hand, for they deal honestly. The high priest Hilkiah said to Shaphan the secretary, I have found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. When Hilkiah gave the book to Shaphan, he read it. Then Shaphan the secretary came to the king and reported to the king, Your servants have emptied out the money that was found in the house, and have delivered it into the hand of the workers, who have oversight of the house of the Lord. Shaphan the secretary informed the king, the high priest Hilkiah has given me a book. 
Shaphan then read it aloud to the king. When the king heard the words of the book of the law, he tore his clothes. Then the king commanded the priest Hilkiah, Achaim, son of Shaphan, Akbor, son of Micaiah, Shaphan the secretary, and the king's servant Asiah, saying, Go, inquire of the Lord for me, for the people and for all Judah, concerning the words of this book that has been found. For great is the wrath of the Lord that is kindled against us, because our ancestors did not obey the words of this book, to do according to all that is written concerning us. Here ends the reading. A Song of Praise, Canticle 13, on page 90. Glory to you, Lord, God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple. On the throne of your majesty, glory to you. Glory to you, seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you, beholding the depths in the high vault of heaven. Glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. I commend you because you remember me in everything and maintain the traditions just as I handed them on to you. Now in the following instructions, I do not commend you because when you come together, it is not for the better, but for the worse. For to begin with, when you come together as a church, I hear that there are divisions among you, and to some extent, I believe it. Indeed, there have to be factions among you, for only so will it become clear who among you are genuine. When you come together, it is not really to eat the Lord's Supper. For when the time comes to eat, each of you goes ahead with your own supper, and one goes hungry and another becomes drunk. What? Do you not have homes to eat and drink in? Or do you show contempt for the church of God and humiliate those who have nothing? What should I say to you? Should I commend you? In this matter, I do not commend you. Here ends the reading. A Song to the Lamb, Canticle 18, on page 93. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God. For you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb that was slain, for with your blood you have redeemed for God, from every family, language, people, and nation, a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so to him who sits upon the throne, and to Christ the Lamb, we worship and praise, dominion and splendor, forever and forevermore. The Apostles' Creed on page 96, followed by the Lord's Prayer, and Suffrages A on page 97. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. 
Most gracious God, you sent your beloved son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Raise up in your church witnesses who, after the example of your servant, Vita Dutton Scudder, stand firm in proclaiming the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you as eternal life and to serve you as perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, and all the souls of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified. Receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We now come to the prayers on behalf of the Episcopal Church of the Atonement and the wider church. I invite you to offer whatever prayers, petitions, and thanksgivings you may have, either silently or aloud. If you have a particular prayer request, you can put it in the chat feature of this broadcast. In the lower right toward the middle, you see a little bubble. Chat with everyone, put your prayer request there, and I will do my best to get to it through the course of the prayers which are about to follow. And during the week of October 8th, we pray for the healing and comfort of those for whom we now offer our prayers. For the sick, Barbara, Philip, Phyllis, Mark, Eli, Destiny, K, Ron B, Jerry C, Brad, Mary, Killian, Dennis, Mary, Tom R, Ed, Thomas Priest, Susan T, former President Carter, Ken Deacon, Mary, Michael, Presiding Bishop, Eddie, Donald, John, Tim, Connie, John, Brenda, and all with COVID-19. For those needing special prayers, the families of those hospitalized or in nursing homes, especially Elizabeth, all who mourn, especially the Nugent and Bullock families, for all victims of violence, assault, and crime, for all refugees and migrants, for peace throughout the world, especially in Ukraine, Israel, and Palestine, for Natalie and Judith, who are missing in Israel, and for Natalie's brother, Ben, who is a friend of Mother Anne, for the work of care for friends and care for real and all whom they serve, for all health care workers, especially Joseph Basil, Jackie, Gary, Will, Choi, Erica Kay, Larry, Kieran, Lee, Carrie, William, Eric, Lisa, Thomas, and Emily, for all families and children in this city and state, for all expectant parents, and for all prisoners, for members of our military services on active duty, especially Celeste and Nate, for Paula, our bishop, Charles, our rector, Dave and Amanda, our wardens, and for the members of our vestry, for the birthdays of Teresa Nutley, Tony Chung, Levi Strasberg, Al Kieser, Seneca Karras, Mother Laura Guitardi Littell, and Michael Waltz. For the anniversaries of Father Morris Charles and Cliff Chan, Father Harry Tingley and Gary Jensen, Melissa Mullert and Brett Bravo, Albert and Amanda Kim, Christopher and Nathan Cornish Raley, Stephen and Kathleen Peters, Father Victor and Lucia Conrado, Greg Bradley and Ricardo Viota, and Molly and Terrence Johnson. And we offer our prayers for the departed, remembering Roy Bullock, Chris Nugent, for the over 1,000 killed in Israel and Palestine, the thousands killed in the earthquake in Afghanistan, Dick Buckus, Del Schaefer, and Joe Christopher. And at the anniversary of their deaths, for Brother Damien Curtis Kellum, BSG, Jeffrey Stenberg, Martha Ruth D'Ambrose, Ellen Burns, Suzanne Schaefer, Matthew Shepard, Florence Burke, Dorothy Piper, Beverly Rowland, Keely Deek, and Ronald Working. And we offer this prayer for the people of Ukraine. Lord of all the earth, be present with the people of Ukraine at this time of danger, fear, and conflict. Grant that wise and peaceable counsel may yet prevail and give to all suffering nations the freedom they desire and deserve. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And that prayer comes to us from the people of St. Matthew's, Westminster. May these and all our intercessions be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. The General Thanksgiving at page 101. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks. 
for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. That concludes morning prayer on this Tuesday in the 19th week after Pentecost and the commemoration of Vita Dutton Scudder. Thank you so much for being here with us this morning. We're here every morning on Google Meet at 8.30 a.m. for morning prayer. This is Tuesday. We have evening prayer at 5.30, also on the Google Meet platform. On Wednesday and Friday mornings, we have a Mass at 7.30, Wednesday evening at 6.30, Thursday at noon, Saturday uh, Rosary at 9.30, and the Healing Mass at 10, and Sunday's usual round of Masses at 8, 9, and 11. Uh, another reminder for October 18th, which will be the institution of Charles Everson as our rector, that'll be at 6.30 on uh, October 18th. I may have misspoken there too in terms of the uh, Wednesday evening mass. We've switched it from 6.30 to 7. So the Wednesday mass is at 7, but the institution uh, what the diocese gave us for the time is at 6.30 on the 18th. So again, thanks for being here with us. Have yourself a great day, everyone. God bless. Be safe out there.